Good afternoon from Maryland Stadium. It is Terrapin Tuesday football. I'm Wayne Viner. We've got Scott Green, Bruce Posner, as always. Guys, that was one of the greatest wins I've been a part of. It was, to me, it was fantastic. Scott, we haven't heard from you recently. What's your take on Saturday's win? Uh, I thought the team looked great. Uh, you know, you got Kasim Hill starting at quarterback. Uh, he's played two full games now, three other quarters. Uh, still no turnovers as of yet, which is fantastic. You just put the kiss on him. Uh, hopefully uh, not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Um, you know, defense looks good. Um, Byron Coward statistically didn't do a whole lot, but, you know, I saw some plays where he was really uh, getting after it, mm -hmm. um, you know, taking up their top offensive lineman, getting chipped, um, which opened things up for some other guys on defense. Um, freshman kicker Petrino made both of his attempts. Uh, one touchback for the kickoff. So, you know, and then obviously Deshaun Jones. Uh, Got to talk about that. Three touches, three touchdowns, three different ways. Uh, it was just an amazing game. Tell you what I liked about the press conference today, and I kind of believe it, that Canada said that you won't know who's going to be the offensive star week to week. And right. that indicates to everybody that he feels like he has a lot of talent. Oh, there's and a he's been huge. around talent. I mean, you can say whatever you want about him, but yeah. being at LSU and Pitt and everywhere, he's been around talent. And uh, I think you're going to see that because you didn't see much out of Ty Johnson. You didn't see much out of McFarland. You didn't see much out of uh, Lolo. You can go down Lolo, the list. Yeah, I mean, it was there, like all of a sudden. The comment that rang out for me from the press conference after the game is that there's only one football. And this first time maybe ever that I felt that Maryland needs more than one football. Scott? How do you keep six top-level runners and all those wide receivers happy? Well, before I get to that, I think the first thing we got to say is you got to remember that's a Texas defensive line that's experienced, big, uh, talented. So they were you know, fast. I, out I there. wouldn't take this game and go, you know, is Maryland's run game overrated? Mm -hmm. Or I just think they ran into a very, very big, physical, experienced D line that was ready to stop the run between the tackles. Um, that said, you know, this week you got a Bowling Green team that finished, I believe, dead last in FBS yeah. last year in run defense. I think so. The way he was it, describing them, it was it. the best offense in the country. I think it, he, it, well, it sort of up. sounded like Lou Holtz there for a minute. <laughs> right. they, they were great. Um, I mean, they gave up an easy two, 300 yards to Oregon last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a feeling we're probably still going to see four or five guys running the ball this week, but I think they're going to have a lot more success this week. Okay. So with. And we just saw Matt Canada speak here at Maryland Stadium. And we'd like to thank our sponsor, Meyer Consulting Engineer, with us for their seventh football season. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. It's Bowling Green, it's Temple, it's Minnesota. These games look a little more winnable than they did uh, before we played Texas. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's, well, let's it's, worry about it's, But it's a, sports, it's a video let's sports worry, radio. Let's worry about the first series against Bowling Green because, again, I don't want to see us fall 7 nothing down on the road. I don't care about the 16 points. It means nothing. We've just proved that the spread means nothing. Okay, so Bruce didn't want to answer that. Scott, <laughs> what do you think of these first four games? Everybody keeps saying you got to win four. Is four possible? Yeah, I mean, obviously the tough one was the first one. They mm -hmm. got that out of the way, got the W. Mm -hmm. um, Bowling Green, you know, I know they lost them a few years back, but back mm -hmm. then they had Dino, Dino Babers running yep. the offense, had a really experienced quarterback. It just isn't the same team. Mm -hmm. Should get the win against Bowling Green, even on the road. Um, and after that, like you said, Temple, just a – Atrocious start. Which they to the lost season. to Villanova, right? Yeah, I mean, couldn't ask for a worse start for Temple. Villanova's not even a, one, a yeah, Division One team. Yeah, right? they're they're FCS. All right, and then that and doesn't then, mean anything. And then after that, you got Minnesota, who you know actually I thought looked decent in their opener, but again, you're talking about a team that's mm -hmm. lost a lot of talent and starting mm -hmm. a. A freshman walk-on mm -hmm. at quarterback. So yeah. I think the next three games are absolutely winnable before you go on the road to Michigan. Okay, that that's a pretty good wrap-up. I got one guy I want to discuss. Yes, in the backfield, which is Antoine Brooks. To me, seemed he was. If you look at the game photos, he's making a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. He's intercepted a pass twenty yards downfield. Best player pound for pound, possibly on this team. Got beat for a touchdown though. He did. And that guy was fast. What a catch. Yeah. What a catch. You know, nobody talked about that catch. That was a great catch. He was 
dead out 180 degrees and straight. too when you're as big as those Texas receivers. Yeah, too. those were some big guys. You know, it was sort of, really good. I don't think they utilized them enough, especially the first. That was at 84. They're tight end or yeah. right Humphreys Humphreys yeah Humphreys they got him matched holy. up on Trey Watson what a cover job you had to do for that one holy cow that guy was big yeah right. I mean to I'll answer you to answer yeah. your question I I'd say right now yes I think Brooks is probably your best player on that defense and if for no other reason just because in that you know Durkin type scheme that nickel you know you're going to see him in the box making plays mm -hmm. in the secondary making plays and the bottom line is he's a guy who's just got a nose for the ball and is always around the football. Scott, you, 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 know, you certainly follow it probably more than I do. Uh, were there Durkin touches on that team? Did it look like a different team or still look like a Durkin I mean, as, team? As far as the defense, I mean, it's pretty much the same, same scheme running the same way that it was when he was here. So defensively, I mean, he's got his fingerprints all over this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, offensively, mm -hmm. you're talking about a whole new offense. Mm -hmm. And, and it looked good. You, and, well, i got to ask Wayne something. Do yeah. you miss Walt Bell? No. <laughs> no, I don't. And that was a, a lovely performance last night by Florida State. But they got their own problems. I'm guessing Walt's going to be calling the plays pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Although I'm not sure how much better or worse. Maybe Virginia Tech's the greatest team you ever saw, but probably not. Florida no, State just laid an egg. What was the final? Was it 30? Oh, yeah. I think it was 31 to 3. Yeah, 31 to 3. So. Mm -hmm. Could have been 60. Yeah. Okay. Virginia Tech missed five yeah. scoring opportunities. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, uh, and on that, uh, <laughs> what do you have to wrap this up, Bruce? I have uh, I could, another couple things I want to talk with Scott about. Uh, the sweeps, all right? They use Tavon a lot. They use yep. Jay Sean. They use just about everybody. In your eyes, who are the premier – who's the premier guy on that sweep? I mean – Who do you want to see the ball in his hand ooh. the most? I'm not sure I like Tavon on the sweep. Um, maybe Jay Sean. Honestly, I would even think about think about some of the running backs. Like so maybe, would I. I maybe think guys McFarland. like Anthony McFarland. Yeah. I think would be great. And maybe Jake Funk shouldn't be out there as a blocking tight end on right. a giant linebacker. Maybe exactly. he should be carrying the ball. Yep. Yeah, so it's maybe. interesting to see. But I mean, Jay Sean looked unbelievable on the touchdown sweep mm -hmm. but uh you know after that they kind of caught up to it a little bit right. it wasn't as effective as you wouldn't think it would be but that that situation that Canada described is like you got to pick your poison with maryland because you don't know where else it's going to go right and uh with kasim so far not turning the ball over mm -hmm. i'm telling you you know i've watched michigan man man you talk about it nothing offense yeah. I mean, you know. That's with Shea Patterson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Braylon Edwards. What did he say that was so bad? I can't uh, repeat uh, it on, on tape here. But he no. tweeted. Yeah, he tweeted they were horrible and they don't know what they're doing and pretty much they suck. And he as, hates Harbaugh. The yeah. team stinks. Yeah. The line stinks. The right. Well, Harbaugh's now, what, 9-9? Nine and nine? Against ranked. Yeah. No, 9-9 nine and nine after starting 19-3. Oh, I that's think, right. I think it was 8-8, eight and eight, I want to say. Something like that. Pretty sure it's 9-9. Yeah, 9-9 nine nine nine. Nine or 8-8. Eight eight. Okay. Right. So he's... And uh, Ohio State, 77 points. Dwayne Haskins looked, looked unreal. Fantastic. Yep. fantastic. Looked as good as we thought he could look yep. here. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it's good for him. He definitely did. Yep. And uh, Michigan State didn't look so sporty. Penn State didn't look so sporty. No, no. We stayed in that press box and waited and waited, and then it went to overtime. And I think everybody left and said, this is over, when the Penn State game got to overtime. Yeah. Penn State was going to win. That fourth and two with, I guess, 20 seconds left looked like they yeah. might not pull it out, but – Somehow got it done. They did. So a good week for the Big Ten, I think. It is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have an even better week because you can listen to us on Turp Talk Wednesday. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Uh, big show. Yeah. You've got a sports maven on Saturday and an in the nest from Science starts and Starts on Sunday. The Ravens season starts, and they might be playing against Buffalo Bills with Brashad Perryman. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? And Nathan Peterman as Nathan a quarterback. Peterman. That, Isn't he one, that's of, one of Canada's guys? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So oh, said, we, you know what we forgot to sing O Canada, but we'll do it on the air tomorrow night. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, hey, that's how we'll Scott, open. That is Scott. Thank you for being <laughs> on our <laughs> Tuesday you. football edition. It. Always a pleasure, Scott. And, you, can, uh, you can hear Scott often on our show, right? right? And you can find him on on Twitter at Darren Nation, and then obviously the Maryland Rival site. All right, we will see you from the studio. See you on the radio Wednesday night. Good afternoon.